All right, what do we got? Chaz opening under the gun. With a hand. We do not know. Chaz, or excuse me, Colby. Near the cutoff and might be thinking about a three bet. Yeah, this is a hand where you're most likely going to want to go for a three bet, and he does. It can get tricky because under the gun opens are going to push back at you pretty decently uh, in terms of frequency, but doesn't mean that you want to just like start, you know, playing everything as a call and trying to uh, just limp along. Big Daddy Chaz is going to take a peek over, find out exactly what his opponent is working with in terms of a stack before he decides what he's going to continue with. Scans his cards in, and he's got ace four, and if he's going to continue with this one, I think it's with a four bet, and Colby not going to like that. But uh, let's find out if I'm true, to, if, that's, uh, if that's true or not. Well, you say that, but I was correct. Uh, I, I messed I up his words are hard. Like I but, was just uh, way too late. That's <laughs> words are hard, but this four hard. bet was coming. And now it's on to Colby, who has to figure out if this very small raise is worthy of fear. And he says no. Pretty quickly puts out this call. And this is like this weird battle of these two hands right. that neither one of them really wants to just call and play. Like, they just they only want to raise and win or... Yeah, take the upper oh. hand, and it's just going to oh. be a oh potential disaster. There are some backdoor space potentially here for Colby with top pair with Big Daddy Chaz. Top and bottom pair, aces and fours. And with already 2K here in the middle, Colby with oh, less than 3.6. I mean, there are probably a number of favorable turn cards that could come for him that could get him, a, could force him to maybe stick more money than he would maybe want to in this. Yeah, he needs a 7, a 10, a spade, or a card bigger than a 4 to peel off that give him some additional equity, but right. he's certainly not folding this hand. And there's no reason to play it as a raise, as you have just called. Um, and as I say that, Colby goes for the raise. This, uh, this, this is how you set yourself up for piling all of your chips in behind. Um, as Big Daddy Chaz now is like, I mean, what do you got? Well, talk about that, that, that belief that Chaz took that he put in the four bet to 950. You have what? Uh, what? It was less. It was like a fourth pot size bet, or so. First act, and that looks like it induced Colby to try to take a stab at this. So, I don't know if that was deliberate in trying to bait Colby into making a move like this, but. But Colby shouldn't do it, no matter what the bet size is. To be quite frank, um, because uh, well, Big Daddy Chaz just pulled out. Is, I guess was the. Well, Big Daddy Chaz just has such a range advantage. Uh, all right, let's we take a look in. at this. Eight, seven. Oh, oh, Colby gets lucky. Colby bailed out. And Chaz's two pair turns the dust. As Colby going to profit over 4.6K in that pot. And that by us thinking about leaving, that that was the magic ingredient to to stir things up and get us a big hand here. So, all right, Absolutely. Colby opens here off of the, looks like $40 double straddle, or 50, I think it was a 50. Then we've got Jeremy Coleman with sevens, Boots here with ace five suited. Yeah, and with the call in between, not gonna turn this one into the, uh, the three button variety of the ace five. Eli though, fires in a couple of oh boy. pink chips with king queen off suit on a massive three bet here. And back over and around to Colby. He's clean off suit. Eli getting a little bit frisky here. Let's see if Colby yep. can go for the four bet. He did just get two calls in between, so he is certainly the player to do it, if anyone, as the two callers are generally going to have this sort of mm -hmm. hand range. And let's see if Colby can find the gas pedal here. Gas pedal, 
got or the, wait, that, I don't want to oh, see the rest of the This is the other way this hand could go is that Colby calls and then that incentivizes the two players behind to call, which is how this one's going to play out. Oh, God. Here we go. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta, we're going to have like 4K in the middle here before we even see a flop between four players right now. I'm pretty sure Goodness that's exactly gracious. what we're ready for. Here it is. Yep. Here we go. Boots puts in the call and chips as well, closes the action, and Colby created a cascade of uh, calls behind him. So here we go. Four players to a flop, each one in for $1,000. And, oh, there is a wheel draw here for Boots over pair for Jeremy. And a gutter ball to a five. Let's see who decides to go crazy on this. And it's probably going to be Eli. He's going to try to represent kings or queens and rip here for 2.5. Colby stuck out in no man's land. But now Jeremy and Boots may face some very interesting decisions. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy certainly uh, has a player to act behind, which is weird. Eli has shipped it all in, so this could be just a, a made hand that's better than him, actually, kings or queens, something of that nature. And it's 2.5K. You've got 5.6 in stack, so Boots covers you. This is just a very awkward spot to be in. Yeah, because I, I guess from Jerry's perspective, you're rarely just drawing dead here in the spot, right? Like, it's just... Well, it's not possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Because you can always hit the you gutter, always, even if even if your opponent has a set, you could have, uh, you yeah. can hit a seven. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah, always so live. It's, he's kind of put out in a no man's land as he's also got a player to act behind him that is like, okay, maybe That's if this guy's getting squirrely here and maybe I'm wrong, I'm still, you know, not in an awful position. Yeah, but I mean, so let's see, let's say that. Eli actually does have kings, right? Right. And Jeremy's got all four fives in his mind. He's got all four fives and two sevens. So six outs twice. He's got 12 outs into like 44, 45. Um, so, I mean, he's just trying to figure out like one in four times I get there, right? Right. And if I'm just good, right? Getting this 2.5K into a pot that's going to go up to nine. Like, if I'm just already good, then all I have to do is hold against uh, what could be a fair bit of equity. But, wow. So he calls, and now we're back to Boots here. That just has got the open ender with backdoor spades. And Jeremy's going to have three points. Like, he's just so – it's a, such a weird spot because it's like, <laughs> how can I fold? There's so much money out there. Yeah. Everybody just keeps getting priced in left and right. This is just absolutely bananas. And the weird thing here, though, is that Boots almost at this point is like, do I just ship it in to get the rest of Jeremy's chips in now and just realize all of my equity? Like, if, like, a jack of clubs peels off on the turn and then I have to fold when Jeremy goes all in for 3K, like, how stupid is that, right? And just, like, leaving all that money out there. Like, do I just pile it in now and hope that... Just yeah, because it's just there. sort of like, okay, well, say I do call here, and then I hit a deuce or a set, and like, it's... Well, I, there's I, I so much in the pot that th then you'd be just happy, right? Mm -hmm. um, right, right, right. But, yeah, here it is, 2.5K calls from Boots. $11,500 pot here, Aaron, and we still got two cards to come. We still have a side pot potentially brewing here between <laughs> pocket sevens and ace five. Well, the craziest thing is that Eli is still alive to a king or a queen. I know. Right? It's not out of the woods here yet. Like, he so. thinks he's just, like, he's just throwing up in his mask right he's now. Like, oh, like, I got uh, called the two spots. Great. So I got to go back to work. But here we go. After the turn, it's a blank. That is full-blown blank. It doesn't get any blanker than that. That is blank, man. Check, check. Four on the end. Jeremy with the sevens, sevens. is going to hold up. He's going to win an $11,500 pot with pocket sevens. And it is going to be good as both boots whiffed at it. Oh, oh that's the best, good. Carolyn. Yeah. As, oh, my goodness, Jeremy. Back ah. here on the positive side of things, going to scoop this massive pot. Let's go. In a um, multi-way pot, it, it's not necessarily the collusion. There, it's, such a, it's just one of those things that once the pot size gets too big, like 
you're just going to see some restraint by some players to not have to make their decisions become much more difficult then. We've got the Duke versus Carolinas of hands. Queens versus Ace King. Two different kinds of Ace Kings here. So it's really, Aaron should not have taken a break just yet. I think he's, but nonetheless, as uh, Sparks opens, Chaz gonna three bet. Now Eli is he gonna go for the four? That looks like he will. So now Sparks just having gone flush after flush has gotten raised and re-raised here with Queens. Probably not too concerned as much. I mean it's Eli is only by our count at this point with about a thousand three hundred plus back, so really more concerned probably as to if I try to put in a five bet here in this spot, now what does Big Daddy Chaz do? I guess maybe you can opt to elect to just call here in this spot, but I can't imagine once you get back to Chaz here in this spot that it's just going to be just a flat here in this spot, so he's going to go and shove as a lot happened here as again, Sparks open, Chaz three bets, Eli four bets on the cutoff. Now Sparks rips and now a $3.9,000 decision here by Chaz. Came back at just the right time for the action. Yes, you did. This, this is a tricky one here for Chaz, but he's realizing, well, he's got both he and Eli covered. Eli's four bet maybe puts the bricks puts the brakes on him because like is Eli gonna do this with jacks or could he have ace queen or, or something else that maybe he can take out some of the card combos that he's looking to try to make here with this particular hand uh boy this, let's see what Chaz decides to do here as Eli I'm pretty sure after putting in as much as he has he has no choice here yeah, you get like one one hundredth of the pot. Yeah, I think Eli is, is going to be happy to get the rest of his chips in with the Ace King, uh, especially now that Big Daddy Chaz has called. I mean, you just there's just no chance to get away from it. Oh my god! I goodness. mean, maybe he does because it's just sort of like he is going to see here that he is going to show it face up and. I mean, there's so much money out there, but it's also yeah. in that earlier discussion where it's like, when did that, that point of like pot odds and just feeling like you just might be practically stone dead? And he begrudgingly will make the call. It'll be better one than he thinks, at least have the clubs and the hearts live. Yeah, I mean, I think it's sort of curious. I mean, he like shows his hand there as like, well, this is what I'm working with, <laughs> yeah. and then and then makes the decision. But... Um, Bones says that the Ace of Clubs is the one that's going to win this one. So we'll see as we do have three players. So okay. So we, since we do have a unanimous, there, it's not something you could commonly do, but we are we do have the capability here in this type of a game to approve it. Okay. Well, let's see here. As all right, we'll so count up before we bring in the man. That's again, that's uh, Eli here with 1.9, so work 1.9, and then work everything else on the side between uh, Sparks and Chaz. Says. Maybe some run good for Sparks. He's not traditionally run particularly awesome on our stream, and you missed that he went flush over flush with Colby and probably lost the minimum on it. Wow, okay. So it, it was a lot of action since I've left. That's as it as, as it usual, goes. right? Oh, Woo! A set of queens, <laughs> and with one of the kings gone. Oh, oh, oh. And oh my God, he's still alive though. To the he royal. To the royal, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I mean, that takes out the queens and the king in that situation. As boy, there were some uh, people sweating the bad beat that were. There would have been the jack of diamonds, I think. Yep. Uh, still good here for Queens. No more Queens left in the deck. Even if it came, it would have been a boat for Sparks. No Broadways. 
winning oh, for boy. the other players. And Queen's going to scoop it. Nice pot there for Sparks. Eli getting felted. Big Daddy Chaz shipping over. Just about 4K over to Sparks on that one. He was the, the bigger of the uh, of the two there for the payoff. Uh, hey, pop on into the commentary booth hey, yet. Ah, Here's super producer right? Carolyn has yeah. an idea for me. Ooh, and, uh, yes. I, I also have a couple of ideas for folks, and I don't know. It, it's just, it's always a matter of scheduling and whether or not someone is going to be trying to play the game or uh, yeah, whatever. But, plans or but yeah, I think, you know, it, it's it's always kind of tricky to, to find someone who's... Who, who's who's like interested and as it's well? It's also yeah. like somebody you trust to be charismatic enough that they're not. You're just going to be pulling teeth, which has never really happened here. So, like I always appreciate the fact that when we have when I have you on here, I never have to sweat. It's going to be a fantastic show. Hell yeah, brother! As we've got a three bet by Sparks, a four bet here by Jeremy with a couple of ones. Pure had started the party here with pocket nines, up, upping it here to 125, and this is probably just going to get pulled straight through unless Sparks woke up this morning feeling dangerous. Which this, what, what's going to be about uh, 700 more to him in a pot of 1,900? Would he maybe take a, a shot at this to see if he can kind of flop big? It's Pretty. Yeah, definitely not a five betting hand. You block nothing, but uh, even though you play it out of position, when your opponent puts in the cold four like this, it it screams strength, and especially Jeremy, who hasn't done a lot of three and four betting. So I think Sparks is playing this one just as like, dude, if I connect and I hit something, like I'm gonna get paid off because I think my opponent's got something. Um. There's one diamond and then one eight, so Sparks does make a pair. It is also possible, right, in right. Sparks' mind, that Jeremy could have ace king. He's going to check it over, find out if Jeremy wants to continue betting and telling his story. Uh, Jeremy going to do the old double check, like, do I have a club, <laughs> which uh, is curious. He's going to check once he discovers that, yes, I do have a club. Another jack peels off, and he might have just thrown up in that mask a little bit in case his opponent had a jack. Now he has three of them. However, of course, he doesn't always have a jack. But uh, when you give a free card and the top pair on the board, like the one reasonable card that you would expect your opponent to maybe continue with pairs, you just kind of go like, uh, Is, did that just really happen? Is that, this real did life? Did that happen? Uh, it is real life, and Jeremy does still have the best hand. So Sparks now trying to figure out what he wants to do with his second pair. And if this wasn't a four-bet pot, I would say you would just want to check and get to showdown. As it stands, it is a four-bet pot. And he's going to go ahead and fire out a little probe here and find out what's going on. School my gas when you guys do tequila shots with a splash of Purell. Dude, we don't degrade ourselves with Purell. We go to the top of line. We go to all pure hand sanitizer. If we're going to mix that in with some tequila, don't insult me like that. Purell, get the fuck out of here. All pure or nothing. Yeah, I mean, come on. We got standards here on this show. Wow, and if that wasn't a jack on the turn, some other innocuous card, Jeremy, would have gotten sucked out on. As it stands, Sparks has three pair, Jeremy, with the superior two pair. Yes. So 4.1K there. Sparks. Does he go for, say, like half pot? I mean, could, could he also realistically be... Okay. I think well, if, I'm thinking he's worried about it, like a, a check raise in the spot. Is he? Yeah. This hand has worked out in such a bizarre fashion. Yeah, I think here you need to go for value and you need to go big. Uh, if you're going to bet, you need to make it look like an ace king trying to get you to fold. You don't want to make it look like, oh, call me, call me, call me, call me. Uh, this is the call me bet. And I don't know, Sparks is probably going to be like... How do you ever bet this with Ace King? Like 1800? You think I'm going to fold the 1800 with Ace King? It can't be that. So if it's not that, then it's got to be value. What are your value hands? Aces? Aces. 
You have aces? The way they've done the vaccine rollout, and that's the question of, like, right here and now for Sparks. And, and he's that, looking up at the sky and he says, does he have aces? Is it aces and only aces? Is that really the answer to the, to the, to the equation, the solution, the yes. one and only solution? Uh, okay. More and look at we're him. drifting down. We're drifting down a weird spot here. I kid. You're you're kidding? No, yeah, I am. But. Oh, he's calling. Oh, but he, he did. He, he scrunched up his eyes, and you could tell that that's what he was thinking. He's like, you literally only have aces here. I don't believe it. I have to call. So this is where we round third and head for home. Aaron McAvoy and Mike Gumblett for Carolyn Hapgood, a producer. And the words of the great Mike Sexton, may all your cards be live and your old pots be monsters. Join us for TCH Live Dallas Tuesdays and Wednesday. Back here in Austin on Thursday with AA Ron. Good night, y'all. Good night, everybody.